everyone. So today we wanted to do a super in-depth wedding makeup tutorial. When I first started my career as a makeup artist, I was just doing avant-garde and very artistic makeup. It didn't make a lot of money. <laughs> so um, I had to do more glamour makeup. And uh, I was doing a lot of photo shoots and it was really fun and it was taking up a lot of my time and it was great. But then when I got pregnant, it was just really challenging to continue that. So I made the switch to wedding makeup and it was kind of something I was really known for. You know, really creating beautiful, healthy makeup looks where people didn't look like they were wearing makeup and they didn't look like the makeup was wearing them, but they were actually naturally beautiful beautiful and the makeup was just enhancing them. When I got married almost 10 years ago to my husband, I did not want anybody to do my makeup on my wedding day. Do your makeup yourself and I really hope that this video helps you. If you do have any skin issues, you want to make sure you start working on that at least three months before. So this way when you are ready for your wedding, your skin is kind of in balance and it's got like a good rhythm going. So one of the things that I really do, I like to use certain devices. Most of the time they do have a lot of benefits. I'm going to be using one right now. This is called the Z it's definitely a little bit of an investment. This is the right time to do that. This is the right time to treat yourself. There are alternatives for this as well. I've used the New Face as well, which I also love. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Conductor Gel. This is the golden gel that it came with. This product was sent to us and I did try it and I really liked it. So what's so nice about this, it kind of engages the ATP in your skin. So without getting into too much detail, it has these electric currents that kind of make your cells stimulate and it lifts everything. The effects are slightly temporary. You do have to continue to use it to get the benefits of it. So for this particular tool, you do have to use the app. It's called Instant Gratification. And I'm just gonna click on it. And for whatever reason, it just sinks like this. And I'm gonna go start this treatment. If you guys want more information on beauty tools and which ones we like the most, we could definitely do a video on that. Just let us know down in the comment section below. This particular treatment is only four minutes long, so it's not that bad. So you can see I've done it on one side of my face and the navial fold is so much better on this side. And this is actually my bad side. <laughs> Everything is more lifted on this side. You can just see a difference. This one looks really deep. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wash this conductor gel off my face and I'll be back. Now to further prep my skin, I'm going to shave my face and this is optional. I know a lot of people are afraid to shave their face, but why I like to do this is because it really does help get rid of any peach fuzz. It also does kind of allow you to get rid of any stubble in case you have any. <laughs> also, it does kind of help exfoliate any dead skin. So it will allow the makeup just to look more natural on your skin. It's really important you make sure that you do shave dry with a clean face because this is gonna help avoid ingrowns and you wanna make sure you use a Korean blade. They're really easy to get. The last thing I'm gonna do for skin prep, and I always did this to all my brides, I'm just gonna take a towel and I love to use a terry towel. I just went ahead and made part of the cloth really, really warm. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna kind of pucker my lips and rub them, not too vigorously, but hard enough to where I can get rid of all the dead skin. So I kind of do this and just rub it in a circular motion. I'm just not gonna apply my favorite lip balm in the whole entire world. It's just the La Mer lip balm. You can see this one has been through a lot. I'm just gonna go ahead and this is my personal one. You can feel my lips feel so insanely soft just from that one tip. I'm just gonna go ahead and now prep my skin using my favorite moisturizer. This is just the SkinCeuticals Skin Firming Moisturizer. And you really need to make sure your skin is primed perfectly. You're gonna be wearing your makeup, chances are, through a lot of different emotions. Maybe you'll be nervous. Maybe it will genuinely be hot. <laughs> this is our complexion perfection, and I just like this because it keeps my makeup on all day long. An alternative to this, in case you don't have this, you can use Vagisil. And you can see I'm applying upwards. And I like to apply with my hands, so this way the heat in my hands can really make sure that I'm getting great application where the primer is melting into the skin. I'm getting all the benefits. This is the Matte Perfection from Huda Beauty. I'm just gonna apply this because you really want application that is gonna look perfect all day, and there's gonna be some areas where you just naturally get sweaty. And melt proofing your makeup is so important. So now I have my skin prepped and primed, and ready to begin. Typically, I actually like to begin with foundation first, but for your wedding day, you really wanna make sure that your eyes are just so perfect and no makeup falls. So I'm gonna use a small amount of our Overachiever Concealer. This is my color, Toasted Almond. I'm just squeezing a really tiny amount on the Zimac tip, and I'm gonna use the tip just because it's cooling and I like the deep puffing. So I'm using it to apply, but really applying a small amount. And I'm going in this inner corner because that's for me where usually you can see the imperfections. And I'm just using my finger really, really lightly. You can also use a beauty blender if you like too. 
You just want to make sure that the pressure is really, really light here. You do not want to apply too much pressure. And I have such a thin layer. I'm now just going to go ahead and use a powder. I am using our Easy Bake. You can use any powder you like. The Laura Mercier is great. There's so many good powder powders out there. I'm just applying a small amount here on the Beauty Blender. Really small amount. And then I'm just using the back of my hand or a towel. I love using a towel as well. Just putting it out and just kind of like stippling on the towel. And I'm just putting a really small amount on my lid. I'm just going to take whatever's remaining on my hand and putting it on the other eyelid. Again not dragging, just pressing. Very important. For your wedding day, there's so many different looks you can do. I'm gonna show you just a really nice natural look. This is just a really simple kind of wedding makeup look that will work for every single person out there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm grabbing, this is sandalwood from our rose gold palette and I'm just using a fluffy brush. This is the Morphe G24 brush. I want to kind of contour the lid. So if I look straight and I look in the camera, I can see I have a lot of lid space, a lot of lid space here, a very prominent brow bone. So I'm just gonna apply a small amount of shadow on that brow bone to soften it. I'm just gonna use a nice shimmery tone on the eyelid. This is a really beautiful gold color. I'm gonna use 24K from our rose gold palette. I'm going first with the center of the lid, so the most, like the heaviest amount is there, and then I'm working my way in. I'm just gonna apply a small amount of the fluffy brush just to kind of blend it. I'm going for a very soft, beautiful wedding makeup. And you're using your ring finger before you get the ring. It's the last time you're gonna be using it without a big ring on it. I wanna look kind of innocent. <laughs> <laughs> on my wedding day. So I'm gonna go with a very kind of innocent, really simple eyeshadow. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab an eyeliner. If you're somebody who doesn't like eyeliner, that's totally fine, but I do recommend an eyeliner, and this is why. I don't think it needs to take over your look, but I think you need to shape the eye. So for instance, my eyes, I want them to look bigger. Liner is gonna help me achieve that. I also want them to look a little bit more lifted. Eyeliner is gonna help me achieve that. This is a waterproof liquid liner. Love it. This is from Stila super long lasting in case you're a crier go for a waterproof i've had a lot of brides who started crying on their wedding day while their makeup was done and i was able to really avoid having any issues to redo their makeup for myself in particular i'm lifting so that means i want this outer corner to look higher so i'm taking the tip of this and i'm just literally pressing it on the outer half of my eyelid. I am going to go ahead and use a close-up mirror because I want to make sure this is really good. So that's pretty much all you want and I'm just going to do a really small line on top to make my eye actually look completely bigger. So I'm just putting a small line here, just literally pressing. And you really want to make sure that when you're doing the liner, you kind of like do a little bit and you look, you do a little bit and you look. And I know that seems really tedious, but you're going to get the most beautiful shape for your eyelid. I want to set that liner. I know that sounds weird because eyeliner dries completely. I'm just gonna use an angled brush. This is just any angled brush. This is from Sephora Collection. I'm gonna take that cake liner and I'm just gonna use a small amount and I'm using it dry and I'm just going to press it on top of that line. And what's really nice is right now what you can do is you can start to blend out the edges of that liner. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side now. Get a really good mirror too. Get one that is like super close up. When I used to do people's makeup, I used to get like in their face. <laughs> this is pretty much it for eyeliner. I don't want it to be super intense. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply mascara and then I'm apply the false lashes. And the reason why I like to use mascara first is in case there's any eyeshadow that's on your lash line, you really wanna make sure you clean that off. The worst thing is to have real eyelashes with tons of eyeshadow on them and then false lashes on top. It does not look nice. I'm just gonna use a primer first, just because I like to protect my lashes. This is the Dior Show Maximizer 3D. I've been using this primer for years. I just feel like it makes my lashes healthier than just applying a mascara direct. I like to let it set, especially because it's white. Sometimes if you put a mascara on immediately afterwards, the mascara can look a little gray and less intense. So you do want to make sure that it completely dries. To be honest, I am not fussy at all with what mascara I use on top, just because I'm a false lash lover. So for me, it's just really important that they look really, really black and also that they have a little bit of volume to them. I care more about volume than length. I like them to be thick, so that way I get like a nice bushy base and then I can create length afterwards. This is a really nice mascara from Marc Jacobs. It reminds me a lot of the Too Faced Better Than Sex. Really love the Too Faced Better Than Sex as well. I think I like it maybe a little bit more than this one, but I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm applying a nice layer. This is the mascara I had at my desk. It is really nice. Mona loves this one. And after I apply it on top, because what that does is it kind of pushes your lashes down, I then push them up. Oh. Ah! If you get mascara anywhere, leave it. Do not touch it. The mascara will dry, and then you'll be able to move it really easily. If you try to remove it when this happens, it actually just smudges. 
and becomes more of a nightmare. So I'm just gonna leave it for now. My lashes look really, really chunky, really, really spidery. That's great. That's exactly the way I want them. I'm now gonna go ahead and move on to lashes. When I started doing wedding makeup, I was really inspired by a lot of the brides and I actually created Samantha specifically for weddings. This is so beautiful. When I always wear these lashes, people be like, what mascara are you wearing? It, they look that natural. And that's kind of what you want on your wedding day. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this lash and I'm pulling it out with my finger. Very important, use your finger, don't tug. The curvature of your finger will pull these out really nice and easily. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and measure them to my eyelid and I have a very long eyelid. For me, these are okay. If you do want to trim them after measuring them, just make sure you trim from the outer edge always. You always want that natural gradient in the front. I'm just going to trim a small amount just because I think you should always trim lashes a little bit. And I'm just trimming this last edge, just really a tiny amount. This is the lash glue from Huda Beauty. This is tried and tested, the most waterproof lash glue I've ever used. I've jumped into pools with this. I know my friends have gone jet skiing with lots of water, lots of speed, and this stays on. For your wedding date, if you're gonna be a crier, do not use normal lash glue. There are other lash glues that are pretty waterproof, but this one for me is the most intense. So I'm just gonna put a small amount on the back of my hand. I'm just using the back of a tweezer and I'm applying a nice small amount. And I'm just kind of waiting about three seconds and holding it like this. You guys can see I'm getting a little curve there. So it'll be really easy to apply. Looking kind of downward, just laying it on my eyelid. And now I'm just gonna reposition it. And I'm just kind of pinching it like directly on my eyelash shed. Don't pinch your lid, that will hurt. <laughs> I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side. And what I'm gonna do now before this dries is I like to look at both sides of lashes and I like to make sure that it's symmetric. So this mascara has been there for a good few minutes so now I can actually remove it. I'm just gonna use a Q-tip. As easy as that, it kind of goes away. That easy, all gone. Now we're gonna move on to the rest of the face and then we're gonna move on to the lower lash line and then the brows at the very end. In case any makeup has dropped, you may not know. Actually, it doesn't look like I've really caused too much of a mess. I see a little fallout here, but really minimal. But wait till you use the makeup wipe. So this is Clean makeup wipe, this is a magic trick. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe here. Oh, what? Look at all that. I did not expect that much makeup to be there. We're now gonna move on to the base. So I'm gonna use our faux filter in the tone toffee. Another thing I'm gonna use too, just because I want a little bit like a luminous finish to my skin. I just started using this and so far I really like it. This is the Flawless Filter from Arlette Tilbury. I'm just gonna take a small amount. I'm gonna go the lighter shade, this is number six. A small amount, it's a little beigey. I'm gonna go a slight amount just to, I really shouldn't. And I'm just kind of mixing everything together. So I'm kind of just applying a really small amount all over. For my nose, I'm just gonna use a very thick concealer, it's super pasty. And I'm just kind of putting it on my nose. I'm just gonna go straight using another brush that's just clean and I'm just gonna apply pure foundation on my nose. I'm now just gonna grab a damp beauty blender and I'm kind of just like removing any excess foundation. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want a really, really natural finish. If you're somebody who needs more coverage and you don't wanna use a beauty blender, what you could do is kind of warm your hand up and then just put it on your face. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna melt the foundation into your skin. So you can do one or the other. I did both right now. I am now just gonna go ahead and use some concealer and I'm just gonna use this our Overachiever Concealer. It's a bit of on the full coverage side, but you really can customize it and make it lighter. I'm just gonna squeeze a small amount here onto the applicator, the Zen Mac applicator. And I'm just gonna use the blend side and I'm just kind of buffing out any edges there. You can use a blender if you like. I'm not going overboard. And I'm just gonna use again the same thing on the other side. It also brightens, so I use the color a few shades lighter, not only to conceal, but to brighten this area to make it look really nice and fresh, awake, well rested, not stressed out, just perfect for the wedding day. I'm gonna take a small amount, kind of go upwards here to kind of make that look lifted. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side too. I'm just gonna use the beauty blender to kind of push any edges in here. And I can see my liner is kind of running in this inner corner, so I wanna nip that in the butt now. I'm just gonna use a Q-tip. I'm just gonna go ahead now and grab banana bread from Easy Bake. So I applied a small amount with a beauty blender first just to make sure that the concealer didn't crease. But now I'm just gonna go in with a bake and blend brush and I'm gonna bake. And I think you should bake all the time. It really just makes you look airbrushed and it keeps your makeup in place. You can see I haven't done cream contour. The contour can be very, very intense in photos. I'm just gonna apply a small amount of concealer. For me personally, my chin is slightly small, so I just wanna not conceal it, but highlight it. And I'm also gonna apply a small amount to the corners of my lips too. I'm not gonna bake in this area here, because I don't want it to look really cakey. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a small amount of powder. I'm not contouring anything. I'm just kind of applying a small amount of powder just to highlight the area in a way where it looks really nice. I'm now just gonna go ahead and use a pressed powder to kind of bake the rest of the area. MAC Studio Fix 
and NC44.5. I just kind of want to set those areas where I didn't bake. I actually think I used this on my wedding day at the same tone. So you can see I got a really soft contour going now. I'm just gonna dust away any of that powder. So now that we went ahead and powdered the entire face, we're just gonna do a really nice natural contour. This is from the Dior Backstage. This is the Contour Palette in 001 Universal. I'm grabbing a very fluffy brush for this. I'm gonna kind of play between these two colors, getting more of the lighter shade. And I'm just kind of working my way in here. And you can see usually you kind of stroke with this, just kind of lightly dusting the contour. I'm also gonna dust a small amount of my nose because my nose kind of protrudes <laughs> a little bit and I like it to look a little bit more flatter. So I'm just gonna put a small amount on my nose. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start dusting my forehead. I'm not I'm tapping. Tap, tap, tap. So I'm gonna put a small amount on my jaw. I just wanna see a really natural shadow. We're now just gonna highlight, and usually whenever I'm highlighting, I like everything to be so intense. I like my highlighter to be like so strong. I want people from outer space to see it. I want it literally to be like, bah, bah. your wedding day, do not do that. It could make you look sweaty, and also it just doesn't look that natural. So you can use different types of highlighters. I really love using the Melted Strobe for my highlighter palettes. I would recommend a cream highlighter. Farsali also makes this beautiful, Jelly Beam highlighter as well. We're gonna try that one today. It's like jelly. I'm grabbing a small amount from the bottom of my beauty blender and I'm just kind of cushioning it, it into my hand so this way I'm not getting any strong strokes or, or marks or anything like that. And then I'm just gonna start really lightly on the high part of my cheekbone. A lot of people like to play on their cheekbone. I don't. I like to go right above it. And then I'm just gonna go on the brow bone as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and spray my face with a setting spray. This is a setting spray that we are working on that's super extra hold. You shouldn't worry about touch ups. So a mattifying setting spray really is the way to go. So now I'm just going to go ahead and finish up the eyes. There's not really much left for the eyes. I'm going to use the same brush that I used before. I can see I want to soften the brow bone here a little bit more. And I know it's funny to like finish your eyes and then come back to it, but I personally like to do that because I really want to maximize on the overall look. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and grab sandalwood again. And this is with a firmer brush. This is from Morphe the Y12, and I'm just applying a really nice coat to the bottom here. And although I've kept everything really nice and natural, I'm going a little bit more intense with a very light smoky on the bottom. We're now just gonna go ahead and do the lips and playing with lip liner beforehand and taking photos is so important. So many times I had brides, most of the time they just had a smaller upper lip and I insisted with them that we just overline a slight amount. And what would happen is they looked so amazing in their photos, but also really nice in real life. And they would always message me afterwards like thanking me for recommending certain things for them and the lips was one they always commented on so I'm just gonna go ahead and use Venus Venus is a really beautiful color if you have a more golden undertone this is just from our lip contour our lip collection muse is amazing if you're more beige and undertone these are for me I think the best colors for weddings just because they look so nice and natural if you have a darker tone trendsetter is really beautiful and it's a really nice kind of neutral color I still have the lip balm on my lips so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it with the same towel that I used before and it's dry so I'm kind of just like doing some slight rubbing and also pressing and so now I have a very clean base with no more product on it my lips feel so 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 soft this is a trick you should do almost every single day it's so good and so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start by lining my lips as I normally would the natural shape and my lips are a little wide but um, I personally don't mind it so I'm gonna keep it but I really want to make the upper lip a little bit bigger in the corners I'm actually not overlining I'm just overlining it in the center and a lot of times when people overline, they overline so much and you can see it in person. So you wanna make sure it's really that happy boundary to where it looks really nice in person and still looks good in photos. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna take a nice layer of Venus liquid matte and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on top. I feel like when you use a liquid matte with a lip liner, it kind of becomes hydrating, but you get like the longest application. We are nearly done. For my brows, I wanna use a very, very defined pencil. This is the Precisely My Brow pencil from Benefit. And the reason why I like this is because it's just so precise. It's so firm too when it applies brush strokes so you can actually mimic hairlines. And this is in the shade 3.5, I love it. And I'm first gonna go ahead and just brush out any product and kind of get my brows in place and we can do a whole tutorial on brows if you guys want but I'm just gonna use this very thin pencil to kind of do my brows I like to do them at the same time so I usually do like the same part on the same brow and then I go to the other brow so I usually would like do this side and then I'll go to this side just to make sure the symmetry is there I'm just gonna take a small amount of brow powder this is just an angled liner brush from it the superhero brush and I'm just using this dark color it's just like an eyeshadow and I'm just gonna go ahead and sweep a small amount just so I get a little bit of a powder that will kind of absorb any oils in case they come later on. Okay, the last step, I'm just gonna go ahead and take, this is a blush from Morphe. It's called the Blush Trio, and this is a beautiful shade in the shade Boss. 
I kind of like all of these tones because they're a little bit warmer and it kind of the harmony is there with my lips. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab a small amount and I'm just going to kind of sweep the blush. Keep smiling. Don't smile. Smile. Don't smile. Kind of see how it looks when you do that. This look is really wonderful. If you're getting married right now, then you understand there are a lot of tones to your gowns. There's diamond white, there's off white, there's white, there's literally so many tones. So this look will really go with any, any of your dress tones. And then one thing you also wanna remember, it's really important, is just your hairline because a lot of these areas will show up a lot on photos. They will really take away from your face. I'm gonna use a black truffle. I'm gonna mix a little bit of the cocoa and I'm just kind of filling it in really softly. And I like to use a fluffy brush just because I feel like it doesn't look too defined. And you can see the difference from this side to this side. <laughs> the last thing I would recommend too is body makeup. Body makeup is so important on your wedding day. One of my favorite products to use for body makeup is to use some melted strobe and to mix it with your foundation and then to kind of blend them together. Don't put too much of it, just a nice small amount. And then I would use it with a foundation that kind of sets to powder like Arfo filter and put it all over after you put the dress on and kind of avoid areas where it's like close to the dress. I would just kind of apply really like just a small amount in areas where you need to. It will look so beautiful in photos. It's so, so important. So do not avoid that last very important tip. So this is it. So this is a really simple, easy, very neutral wedding makeup that will look good on anyone. And no matter what your wedding is, no matter how ethnic, non-ethnic, no matter what your wedding dress is, this makeup is like kind of like the most ultimate, most perfect wedding makeup for any occasion. So um, it makes you look beautiful. It doesn't make you look like your makeup is wearing you. It makes it look like you're naturally beautiful and you're wearing some makeup, which is really important. Everything looks lifted, I look healthy, I look very fresh and like I have like a lot going on. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and we really are so excited to kind of start doing these super intense, very detailed master classes for you guys online. So let us know what you guys wanna see. We're super excited to kind of give you guys everything you guys want. So let us know, let us know down below in the comment section and we're gonna give you guys some of the best videos you guys have ever seen. So thank you guys so much for all your love and support. Please make sure you guys like this video and make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on. There's a lot of videos coming and we'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.